Welcome to the Parent and Family Resource. This is a question and answer presentation with Aloisa, titled, What is my relationship to emotion? In this presentation, principles of divine truth and self-reflection questions are discussed in order that an individual can make soul-based change and come to enjoy feeling emotion. This includes working through false beliefs, and giving up methods and techniques that one uses to avoid or suppress emotional expression. Recorded on the 21st of July 2021 at 10 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello and welcome to the Parent and Family Resource. This is a question sent in by a viewer and which relates to emotion and feeling emotion. My children are now adults. How can I ever forgive myself for the harm I have done to them? The following paragraph is an excerpt from a blog post I wrote. I am becoming aware of the many harmful things I have done to them, but the following example is something I can't see myself ever being forgiven for. When my kids were born, they were both colicky. I now know that they were reflecting me. They were feeling my pain and fear. Fear of not being perceived as a good mum, fear of not knowing what to do, fear of what others will think of me, literally fear of everything. But because I refused to feel any of my own emotions, they were trying to feel them for me. What do I do? I took them to a doctor who put them on prescription medication for about three to six months. Wow, all they wanted to do was feel the emotions that were coming at them from me, and I shut them down. I have now taught them to do the same as me. Never feel your emotions. She goes on to say, I feel I don't deserve to be forgiven. Why should I find happiness when I have harmed them? All because I didn't want to feel my own stuff. I feel stuck and would appreciate any help you can offer. For this question, I'm going to apply principles of divine truth and also some self-reflection questions that may help you to reflect more on your situation and also some reminders about principles and also about some truths that might help you to work through this issue. I've just spoken about emotion and about the damage that is done by shutting down emotion in children and why it's good for children to feel emotion and for adults to come to love and enjoy feeling their emotion as that is the way that we express ourselves. I notice, myself included, when people first hear divine truth, and this applies to parents, that they hear divine truth, they realize that they've done all this stuff wrong, and then they sort of try and switch to doing sometimes the opposite of what they were doing. Or a lot of guilt comes up, and you just feel really, really bad, and you try and take different actions. But unless we deal with the soul based issue that caused the problems in the first place or caused you know, our actions in the first place, there's no real change going to happen. So having done that, having done the swing, if you like, from hearing divine truth and going, oh my God, I've really effed up and I've really harmed these children and then feeling terrible, rather than then just trying to take different actions or, you know, trying to be different, which is lying. It's never going to work. Trying is lying. You either do or you don't is my suggestion is to really feel. So firstly, feel that feeling that, that is, you're being confronted with of like, I've done the wrong thing. I've absolutely done the wrong thing. And feel that, allow yourself to feel whatever's in that. A reminder that guilt is, is a indicator that something's wrong, but it's not, a, you can feel guilty for the rest of your life and never actually get through it. You need to find out why you feel guilty, what specifically in you is this guilt triggering and what is it trying to expose to you or show, indicate to you that you did wrong? And get specific about what you specifically have done wrong. From When I say wrong, I'm talking about wrong from out of harmony with love. So it's an unloving things that you have done. That's what you are seeking for. That's what you want to find. If you can find out what the cause of the unloving actions that you took are, then you have the opportunity to change them in a soul-based way. Remember some of our principles, look at yourself first, feel what you feel, find the cause, 
If you make soul-based change on a cause and you feel emotionally and you release the emotion, then a lot of effects will change in your life. So in this question, there's some effects that you, you can see of the children uh, have colic or and are unwell. So this is just an effect of a cause in the both parents. It's not just one parent that causes the issues in children. It's always two, two parties. So both of the parents will have emotions that are causing the children to have an illness. So all illnesses are because of some are really physical illnesses are just a reflection of a soul based cause or you could say I suppose a soul based illness and that means that you need to feel through it emotionally because the way to treat and to heal soul based illnesses is via emotionally working through the issue or the feeling. So babies who are sick, they're just reflecting some unhealed emotional injuries within the parents. Remember, they're reflecting the environment. So as this lady says, she feels it was out of her, her fear. Now, firstly, she says fear of everything. I can't agree this fear of everything. It'll be specific things. And, and I also have a feeling that there'll also be some angers as well, not just fears, but also angers. In this question, I want to focus on the suppression of emotion in the parent and parents, it would be. You need to look at both parents in regards to a child. And if they're ill, then that's an attraction for both of the parents, not just one, but for both. And there'd be emotional soul-based issues in both parents that caused the illness in the child. So firstly, by shutting down emotion, then an effect of shutting down an emotion is that a child or, or yourself gets sick. This lady realizes that she was shutting down her emotion and shutting down the children. So she can, she's already can see like, okay, I had an effect here and, and she also goes on to say that she's basically, her children now also believe that they should shut down their emotions. So you can see how these are passed down from generation to generation, these beliefs and these feelings about it. So firstly, we need to see where our sin comes from and we need to look at two areas. One is what was done to us because as we were also children once and things happened to us and we we have then picked up beliefs and ideas and when we then have children of our own we're often just acting in a similar manner that we were and so we were suppressed as children so now we suppress children in our care also then need to look at the choices we're making because we're adults and then when we have a child we actually have a responsibility role we're in a situation where we could actually do things differently and we could actually make different decisions and allow ourselves to feel our emotion which would help any uh, a child who has an illness and they wouldn't need to reflect that back to us. But there are two things. There's what was being done to us in our childhood as a child and then there's the choices that we have made as we have grown up and that we believe to be true and right and then what we do with those. So yes, it was a choice to shut down your kids. It was, you did that. At the same time, you were also taught to shut down your emotions. So you need to have some compassion for yourself and to, to look at both, both areas. One of the first things to look at when you have this sort of response of like, I don't deserve to be uh, forgiven. Why should I find happiness when I have um, damaged or harmed others? All of these kind of feelings. Those are not going to be helpful to you to actually feel and hear all the reasons of what you've done. So there's a lot of judgment in those statements. There's a lot of self-like attack. And these are techniques that some of us use in order to shut down emotion. So you're saying that you've taught them never to feel emotions. You're still acting in the same manner to shut your own emotions down. Judging yourself for what you've done is not going to help. A way that I look at it is like, okay, I've done these things. These are actions I've already taken. I can never go back and change them. And some of the actions that I've personally taken or that you have taken as well, you won't be able to correct to the full capacity. Only God's going to be able to do that and the, based on the desire and the choice of the person who that we have harmed. And that can feel very overwhelming, to be honest, and you can feel quite bad about that and depressed. What I'm saying is feel those feelings, but don't remain in them because remaining in the judgment, remaining in the self-attack, remaining in feeling bad, all that does is avoid the actual deeper feelings and finding the causes of why you've done what you did. There was a reason that you didn't want to feel emotion. There was a reason that you shut your children's emotion down. 
And that is a more productive place to head is to find out what your reasons for doing so. A reflection question you can ask is how do I feel about emotion? How do I feel about myself feeling emotion? How do I feel about emotion itself? How do I feel about other people feeling their emotions in my company? How do I feel about specific emotions? You know, what are my beliefs or feelings about feeling fears? What are my beliefs or feelings about feeling anger? What are my beliefs and feelings about feeling grief and sadness? What are my feelings of, you know, how do I feel about feeling shame? There's many areas that you can explore and start seeking to find out your current true feelings and beliefs about how you feel about emotion and the expression of emotion, both in yourself and in others. When we judge and when we attack ourselves or we go into just feeling guilty, we're not being humble now. God wants to correct what we have done wrong and that's what God's laws are all set up to do and that is what if we want to love and we want to actually love because these children that um, in this example uh, have now grown up and they're adults but you as the parent are still a parent and the, still the dynamics going to be emotionally like a child and as you were when they were children so if you can heal in yourself the issues of why you shut down their emotion and your own beliefs about emotion by releasing those and coming to a place of truth and in harmony with God's way of viewing emotion, that actually will help your children no matter what age they are. So some of the questions that have been sent in recently are about adult children. And I was thinking about it, there's not much difference between adult children and small children. They have, they've had more experiences, they have, um, well, they may have had more experiences depending on the situation. They have an adult body, they're supposedly <laughs> growing up, but as we've I've referred to in just the introduction to this question and answer, that we're not really growing up emotionally and often we're not growing up spiritually or emotionally, physically or um, sexually in pretty much any area of our lives because we have all of these things that happen to us in those areas as children and we're not even really growing ups in the sense of being fully self-responsible in those areas. Also, the dynamic between a parent and a child doesn't change until one or both parties changes and then you can start to have a real relationship with the children who you attracted into the, into the world. Regardless if your child is growing up or a, a small child, if they're a small child and you make soul-based changes, then that will affect the child much more rapidly because they're feeling and they're a lot more open and they're also in your environment. 24 7 and so you making a, a positive shift and becoming more loving will have a direct effect that you will see more noticeably in a small child but even in an adult child you making shifts in yourself is going to have a very positive effect because you will no longer have any impediment to them feeling their emotions and they will feel that because until we work emotionally through injuries with our parents and our families we are still connected emotionally and at a soul level to our families. And it's only by emotionally working through issues that we start to sever those ties and to become independent of our families. So if you come to the realization of, wow, I've done something wrong, and then you wanna feel really bad or judge yourself, acknowledge, okay, I really wanna judge here. Why, what is it that you, why, what do you get out from judging? Because judgment, or self-attack or, or, or feeling like you're just such a bad person now. There's different reasons and why different people use these methods to get, but really they are to get away from emotion. You do need to feel the fact that you have done something wrong. That part is, is something that you do need to feel because you have done something wrong. And as a parent, we do a lot of things that are out of harmony with love and that are immoral and unethical and that are very damaging to children. And we need to feel the fact, wow, I've done the wrong thing. And that is a feeling that will need to be experienced. Judgment, self-attack, remaining in guilt can be for a lot of other reasons. And in, the, in this case, or when you've heard truth, I, in my experience, they're mainly techniques that we use to get away from feeling emotion. And often there's a lot of anger associated with them when you get down to it. There's a lot of angers about it. And then there's often fears and also grief that we're avoiding. 
but you want to get to the fears and the grief because then you can actually heal the real issue. So I suggest if, you, if you're in a judgmental place and, or you're getting hard on yourself about it and you're punishing yourself for what you've done, find your reasons why you want to do that. In my experience, I used judgment because that meant that I actually didn't have to deal with the emotion. It meant that I could look to the world like, yeah, I've done a wrong thing. And, and people will respond to you like, yeah, yeah, you did, you know, or if it's parenting, often people actually go, there, there, no, you didn't. You, you did the best you could or whatever, which I don't feel that's true. I don't feel a lot of parents do do the best that they could. But using judgment is a way to get away from feeling just the fact that we've done some things that are wrong and now we need to correct them. God is very loving and very good. And if we take God as an example of a parent, and if you aspire to parent as God parents, we need to look at two things. One is ourselves. If we are punishing ourselves and getting hard on ourselves and judging us, isn't that what we grew up with? Isn't that how our parents treated us when we found out we did the wrong thing? Aren't we just reinforcing all of these things about us that were reinforced to us as, as our parents? That's not how God treats us. God says, no, it's wonderful that you can see that you've done the wrong thing. It's, it's wonderful that you can actually see now that you shut your children down because now you can make some shifts and changes in order to correct that problem in yourself and that will then have an onflow effect to your children. God also never feels like something is, never feels there's a hopeless situation. God is always giving opportunities and wants us to correct the, everything that's out of harmony with love. So if we're judging ourselves and, and saying, oh, I'm just so bad, how can I ever forgive myself? God has created a whole process of forgiveness and repentance, which indicates to me that God wants us to forgive ourselves and also to forgive others and also wants us to repent for the things that we have done. Now, if we remain judgmental of ourselves or angry or upset at ourselves or attacking ourselves in some way, we're not going to go through the repentance and forgiveness process. So we need to give up those techniques and those methods that we use in order to prevent ourselves feeling and correcting the situation in order that we can correct it. So that's number one. Give up the techniques and methods you're using to get away from feeling your feelings. Some of those will be addictive methods, and that is an emotional process too. You do need to emotionally feel about how much you want to judge yourself and then find the reasons why you want to judge yourself. And find the, Don't do it, don't act upon it, but find the reasons why. What do you get out of that technique? Why do you choose that technique? What does that give you? How do people respond to you if you, you do that? What if you don't do that? I've been judgmental of myself and I've been hard on myself and I've attacked myself and all those techniques. And over time, I've come to see the reasons why I do those things and what I get out of those things. It never helps me to get to the real emotion, but it does help me to avoid the real emotion, which then means that I'm just staying there and no change has happened and it doesn't help benefit the children in my care, doesn't benefit me. And I, for me personally, I just get more and more and more worried. And then it seems to be bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I'm like, oh, I don't even want to deal with it. So and then I try and shut it all out. I don't recommend that course of action. It, it doesn't work. It causes a lot more pain and suffering for you and for the people around you. So now that you've recognized the techniques that you're using to get away from emotions, then let's look at how God's designed it. God designed a perfect process to work through and figure out what's why you made the decisions you did. And that's what God wants you to understand is that to correct what we've done wrong, we need to understand in its full capacity what we did. We need to feel why we did what we did. So that would come from our own choices or our own demands, our own expectations or things that we wanted and our own addictive desires. And we need to look at those and unpack those. And when I say unpack those, it's not a thinking exercise, it's a feeling exercise and allow ourselves to feel about why did I want to shut my child down emotionally? As I said, what are my feelings about emotion? And what are my feelings about emotion now? You know, am I still shutting myself down? So in this example, this viewer is shutting herself down still in order to avoid feeling it. She's staying in this space of feeling judgmental against herself rather than getting to the crux of, well, why did I want to shut these kids down? Why did I want to shut my own emotions down? What are my fears and my beliefs about emotion? 
And she's mentioned some of her fears there, fear of, you know, you know fear of not knowing what to do, fear of not being a good mum, fear of how people perceive her. And these are all feelings that need to be felt. I suggest there's other things that were driving the illness in the children. And if you apply the principles, you'll, you'll work through those things. But start with where you're at and you can recognise some of the feelings that you had and I'd work through those now. I imagine how God would parent. God is never judgmental, never attacking, never pulls us down, never denigrates us. Any time that we have a desire to actually see ourselves as we truly are, which is how God sees us, any time that we want to correct the situation, God is there wanting to actually help us to do that. We need to take the actions. God's not going to heal the whole thing. We need to take the you know, actions emotionally in order to work out the causes in us that cause these things to happen, that cause us to make these choices, that why we wanted to um, suppress a child rather than be humble to our own emotions and feel our own emotions, why we chose to shut a child down emotionally and suppress their emotions, um, why, you know, in, in this example, we often use medications, but that's only dealing with effects. It never deals with the soul-based cause. So whatever that feeling in the parent was that um, attracted babies who were ill and, and had colic, whatever that emotion is, those children are going to inherit too. Um, I feel there's a lot of sadness to actually feel that's being reflected and a lot of grief in, in this family that's being unfelt and the children are trying to reflect that back to their parents in order that they can actually feel those feelings. Remember that there's prayer. You can pray for God's help to find out what's really happening. You have the conscience, so you can ask God directly for the truth. And if you're humble, you will get an answer. If you're punishing yourself or judging yourself, you're not going to get the answer because you're already out of harmony with love and truth there. Um, but if you work through those things and then are open to the fact of like, wow, I've, I've done this thing, it feels terrible, and I feel like I've really done a disservice here, now you can start repairing that and remedying it and starting to find out you know, what drove that. So for this question, I also want to look at emotion. So colic, from what I can gather, is about children who cry excessively. This could be for so many different reasons in a family. And so I would take the principles and look at, all right, what is happening in my family? What are the feelings that I'm suppressing? What is going on here? Now, sometimes it's really hard to know what you're suppressing. And when a child is screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming, sometimes it feels highly overwhelming. I'd suggest to firstly look at yourself, how do you feel in that situation? The second part of this question is about shutting down emotion in children. The fact that the children had, were presenting colicky and having symptoms and crying a lot, this is highlighting to the parents, if they're humble, that there's a problem in the envi family environment. Children are reflectors. So they are showing the parents that there's an issue happening here. Now, if a child is excessively crying and they can't, you know, and they're not, and their nappies change and they've been fed and you know, everything else is done and they're excessively crying, crying, crying. There's something else going on in your family and you can be quite confident that there will be an emotional issue that is happening in one or both parents. And so these are things to, to look at and start to explore. Now, if like this viewer's question, you have judgment or, or feeling guilty or bad about what you've done, you need to start there and work through those emotions first because then you can get to the real emotions of what's really going on. You know, why did this happen? What in you was the cause that these children, like that the children are reflecting to you? This question also asks about the fact that she recognizes that there were some emotions going on in these babies and she shut them down. Now, I would revisit this situation now as an adult, even if your children are growing up. I would revisit the situation and for those of you who have colicky babies, you can do the same thing now with your child. Is to So if your children are grown up, then you need to take yourself back or imagine and emotionally you can start connecting to why you took the actions you did and what, what, how you felt when the ch children were just crying and crying and crying and you couldn't stop them, you didn't know what was wrong and you, your desire to shut them down and your own emotions down 
is what caused in this situation to go and get medication. Medication doesn't deal with causes. Medication deals with effects. So still haven't found the cause of why a child is expressing an illness or having accidents or feeling the way that they're feeling. As a parent, we need to understand what we have done or are doing in the family and why we are doing that, finding our motivations or our attentions. If we can find the motivation, the why, then we can actually make some change. If we can't find the why of what we're doing, then we've got little that we can do to make positive change in our families. God wants us to understand why and wants us to feel about the reasons why we have done something and also to understand fully so that we never do that same unloving thing again. It's also important to understand why we do loving things and what motivates us so we can do more of that in the future as well. Firstly, we need to understand the things that we are doing and why we're doing them and what in us. And generally, it's to get away from some feeling in ourselves. If a child is being suppressed emotionally, then they're going to reflect that back in all kinds of different ways to us. And it will be the perfect way for that set of parents to feel most rapidly about what is happening. Children are this beautiful way to learn about love. I feel like the provision to be a parent is such a gift. And though it feels overwhelming when you initially hear principles of divine truth and you go, oh my goodness, because you're faced with the onslaught of how unloving and sinful you are and you just think, man, how am I ever going to get through this? When you've worked through some of those things, you start to come to this feeling of how good God is. Because no matter the degradation of humanity, children are this wonderful opportunity to learn about love if we're humble to doing so. Children are demonstrating how to feel emotion and what we as adults will need to go through if we are to actually heal our soul injuries and what we didn't go through as children, if the parent and the environment allows that to happen in children. Children are, so they're an example of what an adult is going to emotionally need to go through and feel the emotions in the adult at the time that they happen. So as a child would feel, and it's like we need to feel the emotions in us as they happen to us when we were little kids. So there's a demonstration of that. We also have a lot of parents want to do better than what happened to them, or sometimes children are a motivator for adults to actually change certain life patterns that they'd been involved in and lead a healthier, better life as, and become a better example to their children. So this, and this is a positive thing. We can also learn a lot about love and about truth and about God's laws via children. Children have a beautiful curiosity and natural inquisitiveness and they're experimenting with everything and they're learning things for the, for the first time. And I feel this is an example that we need to become like with a childlike attitude of seeking and discovering the world around us and the universe and how we can have a relationship with God and interact with our own parent in, in such a way. As pa earth parents, we're just teachers and a guardian for a very small child. And it's only a guardian for a small child because as a child gets older, they can take self-responsibility for themselves physically very, very quickly, particularly if they ha are encouraged to have a relationship with God and to, then they can get information firsthand. As parents, if we create a child to be dependent upon us, we're being very unloving to a child because we're teaching a child that they need us, that we are something that they can't live without. And this is not true. Children can easily live without us as their earth parents. And that's another gift I feel with children is that mostly we impose ourselves as parents. We want children to do certain things. We are not letting children develop and be themselves and express their own personality and nature. But we could. And if we did, we'd learn a lot about the child themselves and have the potential and the opportunity to have a relationship with that child, that child would like express its desires and its passions and explore those, which would, for a lot of us as parents, we haven't done that ourselves. The joy and curiosity and wonder that a child has, we lose that a lot as adults. We often get cynical or ground down or we don't have that or we suppress those emotions in us. 
when we're children, we're allowed to be like that. But if you remain that way as an adult, you're often judged. And that's, that's not helpful because then all of us in, in the end are going to need to get back in touch with those joy, the joy and the wonder and the curiosity that, that we lost as, that we shut down and suppressed as a child. Children also demonstrate to us trust and they're very trusting and open and they absorb things very, very easily. You don't have to convince a, child, a small child of something. They trust that that's how it is. They also trust that in the goodness of the world, until they're taught otherwise, they have a real trust that things are going to be okay and that, that things could be different and things could be better. And often adults suppress that in children, but that is a lovely quality that I feel is to be encouraged not to be, to be shut down. These are all, all areas for a parent to look at and to examine themselves. So if we go back to the principles of we look at ourselves first, and in this instance we're looking at how do I feel about emotion, what are my beliefs, what are my experiences, what are my feelings about expressing emotion for others and myself. If you find that you want to shut others down, you want to shut yourself down, you don't want to feel emotion, you judge emotion, all of those kind of things, you need to feel about the reasons why and work through that emotionally. Once you do that, then I suggest setting yourself up an experiment and honouring each emotion that you have, honouring your feelings. Really feel about what you like, what you don't like, what you want to do, what you don't want to do. I don't suggest acting on things that are unloving or out of harmony with love. And we've talked about basic ethics, which is treating others as you'd like to be treated. And we've also talked about morality, which is what is right and wrong, good and evil from God's perspective. Now, if you don't have a relationship with God, it's hard to understand what morality is. But if you, um, you can use basic ethics when you're beginning your education in love and you can start going, okay, you know, do I, do I like being shut down emotionally when others shut me down? How do I feel when I'm like soothed? And some of these things you might like, you might want. So that is going to be a bit tricky because you need to also look at, well, what is God's truth about that? And God's truth is that all emotion needs to be felt and released. Emotion isn't bad. Emotion isn't negative. Emotion is just emotion and it needs to be felt. So often people judge, say, anger, for instance. It's like, oh, angry, you can't be angry. In saying that, men, it's, it's more acceptable for men to express their rage to an extent under certain circumstances than it is for women, whereas for women it's more acceptable to cry to an extent. <laughs> How there's this sort of scale. You can't be too emotional and you can't be too shut down. Like either way, it's sort of like there's an accept a world acceptance level and then anything above that or below that, People start, if you're below that, then you get medicated. If you're above that, you get medicated if, or, you know, or shut down in some reason. So we're still, as adults, towards adults, taking the same actions that were taken by our parents towards us as children or that, that we, as we as parents have taken towards our children. And this is why it's so damaging in the world and our beliefs about emotion are so screwed up in most cases. You know, emotions just, it, it flows through you. It once it's done, it's, it's gone. As long as you don't act on the emotions that are harmful towards others, you can safely express those and, you know, in the privacy of your own home or in your car or take yourself out to a paddock somewhere or park or scream into a pillow if you're in a condensed environment. But you can set yourself up a space, no matter where you are, that you can actually do these things and make that work for you, you know, become inventive. But explore your emotional self and come to, to find out who that is. And as an adult, you can make a decision to no longer agree with society's view of emotion and to no longer agree with what you were brought up like. And if you have adult children, to no longer agree with your younger self and actually make some different choices about emotion and about feeling emotion. You have an opportunity to find out how God feels about emotion and and if you desire to know yourself, then that is going to be an emotional process. To recognize the other half of your soul, to recognize your soulmate, it's an emotional, you're going to need to feel yourself and know your own personality and nature and who you are and your feelings and your desires and all of these things. 
If you can't feel that in yourself, how are you ever going to feel the other part of your soul? You'll walk past them and not even recognize them. And the same for children. Like we as adults can create a space that upholds love. And part of that is that emo feeling emotion is loving. In fact, if you're not feeling emotion, you're out of harmony with God's laws because you're designed to feel emotional and be a 100% emotional being. As an example, in our family, when the children were small, I shut down the children from expressing their emotions. I didn't want to feel mine and neither did my ex-husband. And we were very controlling about emotion. They could feel certain things under certain circumstances, but if it went too long, like they cried for too long, and our daughter cried sometimes for like six hours straight, like just cried and cried and cried and cried. And I would try walk her, soothe her, feed her, just try and find any way to give her to my ex-husband so he could take her away somewhere so that I didn't have to deal really with my own emotions. And a lot of that was, for me, was about avoiding my own grief. And that was what was being reflected to me. So in this example of having colicky babies, it's worth going back and feeling about the feelings you had when they were small, because that will give you insights as well to what the illness is reflecting back to you. And this can be applied across any illness or disability that a child is, comes into the world with. Now, some, some disabilities and diseases can also be spirit influenced, but there's always an emotional reason in the family or the family line that causes these things to happen. And it's something to to discover and explore. So for principles, you want to find the cause of what it is creating. So start with where you're at, start with the feelings you have right now that you are tangible and feel through those. And some of them might be addictions and some of those might be false beliefs and some of those uh, may just be methods to get away from emotion, but really feel through all of those resistances. And often that's the way, there's a whole block of resistance that must be felt through before you can actually get to the real emotion. The actual real cause or emotion is quite easy to feel and it's a, a more pleasant experience than all of the resistance we have that we sort of have to like get through in order to allow that emotion to be expressed and felt. By starting where you're at, those are the things that you can feel right now. If you've got small children, I suggest don't shut the children down. And if your child's crying and crying, as long as they're fed and they're, you know, the burps, they don't have wind and they had their nappy change and everything, then just let them cry and let yourself feel how you feel with that. If your intention is to get away from the situation, then it's not going to improve. If your intention when you go away is to feel your feelings, and, you know, just in the, on your own, that's a different intention. So to be honest with yourself, whether you're trying to escape the situation because you find it unbearable or whether you're trying to or whether your intention is to genuinely connect to the feelings you have about what is happening in your family. And that intention is important because if you're just trying to avoid things, nothing's going to change because you're not going to make the soul base shift and you'll want to the child really to change. And that's one of those examples of hearing hearing something and then just taking an action without it coming from your heart. Another principle is there's no change without it being a heart or a soul-based change. And that it requires your you know, aspiration or desire in order to do that. It's going to require you to be humble. It's going to require you to really have a passionate desire for the truth and have a passionate desire to love. Children are the best opportunity to learn about where you're out of harmony with love, and also about how you feel about loving others and whether or not you just want to be loved or whether you genuinely desire to love another person. So when the children in our care were very small, as I said, we suppressed, used many different loads of different methods to suppress, and it was all because I wanted to avoid feeling my emotions. As I have changed my relationship with emotion over the last uh, 11 years, particularly, I feel, it always feels like particularly in the last year or couple of years, and I think that's just because you work through certain things and then you sort of look back and you realise how much you weren't doing. But at the time, that, uh, you know, each sort of portion of time feels like a bit of a change and at the time I would have said, wow, it's so different, it's so good now. And, and now I know that I'm just where I'm at and it's going to get better. 
if I continue to develop my soul in harmony with love and, and God's way. And now because I'm far more open to emotion and I'm less judgmental of my own emotion and I, I, I know that emotion, I know for certain that um, feeling emotion is the only way to make soul-based change. I know that allowing emotion is going, to, is going to make my life better. I know that feeling my emotion brings me more truth and understanding of situations. I know that feeling emotion makes me feel happier and more connected to myself. It also helps me to understand others better and have less judgment. And as a result of coming to enjoy feeling my emotion more and not being worried about my own emotions, I'm also not worried about other people feeling their emotions. And I know that when someone feels emotion, there are some, there are some times still where I take it personally, but a lot of the time I'm like, well, that's just their emotion and I'm not um, invested in them feeling it or not feeling it because I just know that I need to feel my emotions about how I feel about them having an emotion <laughs> in, in that example. And because I'm less concerned about my own emotion and I'm not as afraid of emotion itself or angry about emotion itself or feel ashamed or embarrassed about my own emotion, I have less of those projections towards others as well. And what this has created in our home, particularly over the last year, which is um, the two of the children have been living with me full time and one child still lives between dad, um, his dad and I. And what I've noticed in the two who live with me full time is quite a change in them. They're softening. When I say softening, uh, it's like instead of just being rigid and hard about their emotion, they're beginning to actually express their emotion more. They know that they can just be angry or say things and they're not going to get in trouble or shut down for it. Uh, that we'll definitely talk about how to feel emotion in a loving manner rather than attacking someone else for your emotion. Particularly the youngest child, he'll take himself off and just feel his emotions. He'll just go and have a cry. Like the other day he <laughs> was going out to do some weeding and he hates. He, he realised he hated it, hates it. So he set himself an experiment and he was like, I'm going to go and do it every single day for at least an hour and I'm going to go and, and you know, do this weeding. And, I, and, he's, and he went out and he hated it and he just would rage about it and one day he got poked in the eye with one of the sticks from the weed, from the we're removing lantana. And, well, he's removing lantana. And it, he was like, he's like, so he didn't get much done that day, but he just sat there and he said, I just had a big cry, mum, and I was just ranting and I was so angry and all this stuff. And it's been really good for him. Anyway, one day he came in and he didn't want to go and do it, but he was like, no, I've set myself this challenge. I'm going to go do it anyway. He whacked his head on the bunk bed. I didn't know this until after when I talked to him and I just heard him sobbing, like just crying and crying and crying. I just left him to go through the process and he, he, he just was feeling how he felt about whatever anyway I found he came out afterwards and and he said oh, I just smacked my head on the on the bunk bed and I didn't actually want to go out and you know he, he was able to self-responsibly feel his own emotion on his own and of his own instigation and that I feel is a wonderful thing that has just progressively happened in our family as I've become more open to feeling emotion there's no now impediment towards him feeling his grief and him feeling his, his pain and his hurts and feeling likes like that. And the same with our daughter. And our daughter has had a similar response. She's been starting to actually express the fact of how she feels it's so unequal in our, in our family and she's really angry about it and very, very upset. And, but she's been allowed to express her anger. She's been allowed to have her tantrum. She's been allowed to, to do it. The other day she brought all of her stuff out into the lounge room and just threw it everywhere, all of, all of her stuff. She chucked her iPad at the wall. She did all these things. She chucked everything around. So certain items I just picked up and I put away um, because they're not being treated well. And all the other items, she, some of them she destroyed, some of them she completely ruined, and there was just like literally everything everywhere. And I just left her to it. I just, I just was like, well, it's all of her things. They're all her personal possessions. And if she destroys them, she's going to have the natural consequence that they're destroyed. And also, she had to clean the whole thing up. And she, we were going away the next day, so it had to be done before we left. 
And that was a really interesting process for her because she was allowed to do it, she, which was really good. And it also brought up a lot of emotions in her brothers at the same time because their certain feelings in them were triggered by her actually having her full expression of her rage in that moment, which was a wonderful opportunity for all of us in our, in our home. And it got quite late at night and she was like, Mum, please, can you do it? And I was like, no, this is your creation. You need to clean it up and have the full effects of doing so. She ended up doing it and a couple of days later she was like, yeah. She goes, you know, I am that angry, but next time I'm not going to chuck all my stuff everywhere. I'm just going to feel how angry I feel. And anyway, over sort of a number of weeks, that was a few months ago, but she's softening to her grief now. And that's what all the anger was covering, you know, and she's been expressing how anger feels more powerful and she's got more control and people are going to, you know, she's not weak if she's angry and all these beliefs that she's picked up from her dad or, and from me and from the environment at large. And she's now, you know, at high school, so different people. She's also picked up all these different feelings about emotion itself. And she's starting to feel about her feelings about emotion and express those. And by having gone through the rage over the last months and having the space to be allowed to do that and a real a feeling of like, no, that's okay. As long as she's not hurting another person or like as long as she's not hurting others or destroying other people's property, those are the two sort of prerequisites. And she's been allowed, and that's been a, a process for us to learn as well how to go about that in, in the home, like recognizing when someone's just angry and attacking because they want to harm somebody and just angry because they're angry about the situation at hand and it's, it's, not, it's not good. And, you know, because it's not a loving situation, they're responding to that. And so we've been learning a lot about anger, all of us in the family. And then she's now softening to her grief. And the grief is what, is what she needs to feel. And she's still, her anger comes up, but it's, it's now sort of this, even when she's angry, often she's sort of crying in her rage rather than just, you know, having the, the tantrum sort of rage or that just wanting to remain angry and making it someone else's problem. So um, it's an ongoing process and I'll give you some more updates as we go through this process, but the main point was that when the parent is open and allowing of their own emotions and not judging their own emotions and allowing the feeling of their own emotions, and when the relationship of the parent between emotion is one of like, well, it's like a normal everyday thing, then the children naturally just respond to that. I haven't, uh, the irony as well is that when I wasn't dealing with my own emotions, I did at times try to enforce or compel or encourage or get the children to feel their emotions and now that I the more that I've worked through mine the more I can say oh well, that was not ethical and it was actually unloving and I was imposing things upon the children and I was hypocritical and I was expecting them to do things that I was unwilling willing to feel all of those things were out of harmony with love and I've been had the opportunity then to look at why and my reasons about why and finding the motivations for that and you know what my beliefs are and why I feel like I can actually be unethical in that situation. But as I've, as I've worked through mine and become more comfortable with feeling my own emotions, those feelings have also changed. And by me almost uh, stepping back emotionally and not enforcing upon them, it's opened up the space that they now have a choice. And I think that's what they feel, that it's their choice. And they are now starting to feel some of the benefits of feeling their emotion and they prefer it when they're more emotional and more open and uh, we've just had school holidays and our daughter commented that you know she was quite not looking forward to going back to school and some emotions are coming up for her from her childhood and so she stayed home for a few days and she enjoyed that but she went back to school and then all of this emotion came up and she's like I don't like going to school but if I go to school then all of these things are exposed and so that's good and she's starting to just comment on that actually being in situations where certain emotions in her exposed are helpful for her to see things but she still has these feelings that she doesn't really like feeling the emotion and and so what's quite lovely about it is that I'm observing the process of the children highlighting to me what it's like going from where they've been shut down emotionally to now being allowed to be emotionally and they sort of have these really differing contrasting feelings and it's such a, 
it's such a privilege, I feel, to be, to have children and to, particularly as a parent, if you do your soul work on yourself and you get out of, get out of the way emotionally, for want of a better word, but also physically, which, I mean, anything you do physically has an emotional cause anyway. You start to see them grow and then blossom and then make their own decisions and see the 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 joy and the sense of satisfaction that brings to them when they're allowed to do that. So if we come back to this example where um, the, this viewer taught her children that never to feel emotion, it's like you can change that in your family dynamic and there are a lot of rewards for doing so in the sense that the children are happy, they're more connected, I'm noticing that they're more logical, like they can figure things out more. They're gaining now an understanding of what they've been going through and why they feel the way they do and why they make certain decisions and why they treat others in, the, in a way that they do. In our family, I'm also very honest and transparent about both their dad and my issues that are out of harmony with love. We talk very openly about both parties and about how the children feel about both of us as their parents. We, um, we're very um, open about the unloving things that their dad has done to them and the unloving things that I have done to them and, and as far as I can see them. And we've got some very good friends, Jesus and Mary, who also love the kids and are friends to the kids and they also have shared a lot of truth with the kids about the situation that specifically in our family and what's happening. And the children have come to understand that and it's amazing watching children respond to truth. It's very important. If you describe and explain to a child the truth of a situation, what's really going on in the family dynamic, so between the parents and also, say, the family lineage, if you like, and how the parents have come to be the way they are, and then also it describe to the children what they are doing and how they are acting out and how that has come down the family line. It, we had a conversation about this, for example, between... Uh, gender. In our, in our home we have, um, I've come from a family where men are thought of as superior and treated better than women. Women are inferior and as a girl you are there really to serve men. And the same in their, and our kid's dad and his family, they feel like women are inferior and lesser than men. There's a lack of equality basically between gender. And Men are taught to be superior, that, like I've done that with our, our boys in our care. My brothers were treated the same way. My um, dad feels he's superior to women. My um, ex-husband's dad also feels the same way. My ex-husband feels the same way. His brothers feel the same way. So there's a lot of family injury supporting this injury. So with a daughter, she's come in and, and she's more sensitive to these issues. I complied in our family and submitted to that role as, as a woman and accepted it. And she's gone her personality and nature and because she's had a different upbringing as well and some different injuries and just due to some different factors and different experiences for her and different uh, and because of the way that I have also treated the feelings that I have towards women. Our daughter is exposing to, to us that there's a massive problem in our family with the way that, that you know, of gender inequality. And she's gone, no, I don't like this. I don't want to do this. I'm angry about this. This sucks. Like, I hate it. And she's really vocal about it. And, I, and it's taught me a lot because I didn't have that same response. I was very shut down and suppressed. And I just watch her and, and have let her go. And, and there were times where uh, I was concerned and thank goodness that I had some external f feedback too, to point me in the right direction of like, no, this is a good thing. Her express, is expressing her feelings and her anger and her rage. This is what we all need to go through when we've been oppressed and treated badly. This is one of the stages of emotional expression that needs to happen. And it's very important that it happens and that we don't shut it down. And now I just feel so lucky that, that, we, that I've had won that feedback and let her go through this process because now I can see her, she's still angry and she's still upset, but she's starting to soften at times for some of the grief that she has. And that's also going to be a process that I'm going to need to go through and others are going to need to go through. And watching someone, this is where there's this privilege of, of being an observer of other people going through and making changes in their life emotionally 
And you learn so much about what's happening and also as an example of what you yourself are going to need to go through. And that's why I'm saying children are such a, a gift to learn about love because what they're demonstrating to us as adults is the process if we is a process we're going to need to go through as well to become more loving and to make soul-based change. So shutting down emotion is going to cause pain and suffering both for yourself and for children in your care. And it's not something I recommend doing. I realise that that's not how the world views it. Sometimes I wonder what the world would be like if we, if more people were living God's way. And imagine if you went to a doctor and instead of them prescribing a medication to you, they said, well, this is the causal reason of, of this issue. And as a parent, you need to deal with that emotionally and then that will cure all ills in your family. <laughs> and I feel like, how what a gift that would be to have doctors who actually were that's sensitive to the soul-based reason of illness in a family or the soul-based reason that a child is acting as they are and they knew where to direct you emotionally. And maybe that's what a real doctor is like, someone who can actually help with the soul-based disease, for want of a better word, that we have, which is basically anything that's out of harmony with love and truth from God's perspective within you. In order for us to allow emotional expression in our children, we also need to come to allow it in ourselves. And I mentioned briefly before about how there's different ways of that we've been treated as adults. Sometimes it's nasty and shutting us down and condescending. Sometimes it's like letting us do whatever we want and that we're superior to everyone else and you know feel entitled to different things. There's lots of different nuances and different ways that we've been treated and each person's going to be different. As far as emotion goes, very, very few people allow the emotional expression in children to the full degree in order that they can fully work through the issues. In my experience, I've met very few people who allow their children their full expression. They're always trying to shut them down. And from what I can see so far, it's because of them, them wanting to avoid feelings in themselves as adults. And this is something that's worth exploring and coming to see for yourself of where are you shutting down your own emotions and then how is that affecting the family dynamic? And it will be affecting the family dynamic. You may not notice the effect it's having until you make a soul-based shift. I'm noticing that what happens in the family often just feels normal. We get used to it. It's like the frog in the you know hot pot that's slowly heated. It doesn't realize that it's boiled and died because it just gradually got warmer. So it didn't know to jump out. And I feel like sometimes that's what the family environment's like. We get normalized to it. And children aren't at first, like when they're little, they're the terrible twos, or <laughs> I think they're called, when children start to exert their will, you know, and start to be defiant and start to rebel and start to try and exert their own, own opinions about things. And then as they get to teenagers, they do that again. I don't think you necessarily need to go through those stages. If a child is allowed to express themselves fully, why would they need to? They would learn how to reason and how to discuss things and they'd have their feelings and then they'd come and they'd talk about things. And this is something I think as parents we can encourage and do within our family is actually have the conversation with the child. Not the our emotional response to what the child is doing. We need to go and feel that first. Then come back and look at what is actually happening in our family dynamic and discuss that with the children and be transparent about it and look at why it's happening and what's really going on and encourage children. Like I notice our kids, they just get angry at each other. Like they're just like, basically they're like tiny kids. They just like, I want that. No, I want that. No, you're being mean. No, you're the problem. No, it's all your fault. There's nothing wrong with me. You should change. <laughs> And there's a lot of this sort of thing that goes on because that's what it's been like in our home. I'm now sitting them down and just saying, well, you've got a choice. You can keep going down that road and it's going to cause pain and suffering and your relationships are going to degrade and erode and you're not going to be very happy doing that. And also the issue is never going to be sorted out. So next time that it happens, you're going to have the same fight about the same thing and it might just be slightly different circumstances. Or let's figure out what the real issue is here. Like, what is going on? Like, what are you, what addiction's not getting met in you? Or what do you want and they're not giving you? Or what demands do you have? Or what expectation do you have? 
why do you feel entitled that you should have that thing? And then digging deeper of like, well, why do you feel that? Or what is the feeling driving this? Or how do you feel when this happens? And these are all questions that I've, I ask myself all the time as well. And I have that conversation with myself. But i wanting now to foster with the children an environment where we discuss issues and we seek for God's truth on the issue and we seek for the cause in ourselves and the emotional reason of why we're having the response that we're having. And I feel that children can do this from a very young age. At a young age, they're not intellectually developed and aware. And I even noticed that in the kids who are like preteens and teenagers, they're not thinking yet. That's something that develops over time. And when you first start as a parent, I wasn't thinking either. That's something that's developed over time that I now can see things and I'm making links between certain things that are happening and feelings in our family. And the more that I feel, the more that I understand those things. At first, honestly, I was clueless. I didn't know. And so what I did was I trusted the process of, you know, of God's way. And I went, okay, the truth will be revealed to me if I feel my emotions. And this is why feeling emotion is so important is that we can't find the truth, we can't get more knowledge, we can't understand things if we don't feel about what's happened to us and why we have the feelings that we do. Because while we've got the feelings in us, that filters every experience we have, everything we think, everything we feel, everything we choose to do or not to do is all filtered via our past experience. So until you change that, there's no real opportunity for anything different. There's only an opportunity for more of the same. So emotion and feeling emotion is very important. So in regards to this um, email from um, our viewer, thank you for your question. I really appreciate it and I hope it's helped. Firstly, there's that layer of resistance that you're going to need to work through and that's, you know, all the methods that you use to get away from emotion. And God wants us to forgive ourselves and others and to also repent and find the reasons for what we've done. If we're judging or attacking ourselves or feeling bad about what we've done or staying in the guilt rather than actually exploring the true deeper emotion soul-based cause of why we've taken the actions we are we're never going to heal the thing that we've done so work through your reasons of emotionally why you want to use those methods to get away from feeling emotion itself then I suggest to change your relationship with emotion and actually come to understand your real the truth about how you feel about emotions your false beliefs about emotions, your corrupt faith about emotions. Because what you have faith in is what you're going to do. If you don't believe that feeling emotion is going to help you, if you don't believe that allowing emotional expression and letting it go is actually going to make soul-based change, you're not going to do it. So you need to change those things first. And you also need to work through the resistances you have, which resistance is all about anger. So why are you so angry about emotion? Why do you feel you shouldn't have to feel it? Why do you feel... You know, what do you think is going to happen if you feel it? What are your fears about it? You know, there's a lot of angry feelings, as, which often cover fears. And there's probably a lot of grief as well about being shut down yourself and not being allowed to express yourself and fears about how the world's going to perceive you and wanting certain things from the world, wanting certain things from your partner or others. But you are an adult now. If you're a parent listening to these videos, you can create yourself a safe space you can remove yourself from an environment that is unsafe and you can also provide that for your children. Now, you can't provide that for your children if you haven't provided it for yourself. And by making the soul-based shift and coming to love and enjoy and feel your emotion and emotion not being this big deal anymore, but rather emotion being a normal, natural result of being human, and part of the design of your, the human soul is to be emotional. And so if you come to feel that in your heart, then naturally you create a safe space for the children in your care to feel their emotion. And they'll naturally respond to that, whether they're tiny children or older children. It doesn't matter whether your children are infants or, you know, uh, are tiny or adults. You making changes is going to have a positive, like you making soul-based change in harmony with love and truth and God's way is going to have a positive effect on children, whether they are infants to adults. The younger the child it is, the more impactful and faster they can actually make change as well because they're in the environment. Once 
a child becomes, is into their teenage years and also an adult, they're making their own decisions and they've firmly got addictions and pain and in them and they're acting on their injuries and making choices on those injuries now that they've inherited from you. So it becomes more about their desire and them wanting to make the change. And that is absolutely up to them. You can't force them or make them and they'll just get angry at you if you do or they'll feel pressured or oppressed or whatever and that's not kind on your part but they'll reflect that back to you and this is the beauty of it even as adults we are still reflecting to our parents that they could heal the family dynamic and the situation and their contribution to it if they were humble enough to do so. Uh, Most parents aren't so they don't do it and they don't see the results either and Often they have strained relationships with the children or they're not close and connected and they're not very truthful and they're not open and there's certain things you don't talk about and there's certain things you do. To me that seems like a terrible relationship. Personally, I, want to, uh, I feel like being ha- able to speak about anything on any subject while seeking for God's truth about that subject and, and having desire to love the other person and get to know them is a wonderful opportunity and such a gift for someone to share themselves so openly and transparently with with me and I like to give that gift of myself as well and it it's lovely it feels really lovely to interact with people in that manner so you'd be yourself with people but you might not share yourself with people if they're abusive or unkind or condescending or nasty to you but if you're honoring truth you just raise that and if someone's condescending you'd say you're being condescending now and then you'd leave <laughs> you know and leave them with that because that would interrupt their their usual pattern of getting power and uh, and feeling superior over you by being condescending for instance there's all kinds of different situations that you can be in back to the summary once you've uh, worked through so the resistances and any methods that you use to avoid emotion then you can start looking at your beliefs and your corrupt faith and your feelings about emotion itself to, to begin to change your relationship with emotion then start honoring your your feelings it doesn't mean acting on unloving feelings. You do need to have be ethical and self-responsible if you want to love, but you would honour the feelings, you know, whatever those feelings are, you would then responsibly feel them. So not act on them necessarily. If they're out of harmony with love, don't act on them. It, it's not going to go well for you. And also you want to learn to have your feelings without necessarily acting on them if they're out of harmony with love. That's a process that you need to go through. As children, often children are acting out of harmony with love on their feelings because they never become self-responsible and accountable or ethical with their feelings because their parents weren't and their environment didn't encourage it or didn't have an example of doing so. How, How can they know how to do that? As a parent, if you want to change, you know, make some positive change in the world and in your own family is the place to start. If you change your relationship with emotion, that's going to change the relationship with emotion with the children and say your children are growing up and they have left home if you change your relationship with emotion you don't know what effect that's going to have on them it will they will feel at a soul level that they now have a choice probably for the first time in their life and there will be feelings that they experience in that now what they choose to do about that is up to them you can't control that and they may choose to remain as they are but they may not for example, say you've got adult children and one of them is, and maybe you don't, you have sort of a tense relationship or you don't, they don't want to talk to you. If you change your relationship with emotion and you change your, if you change anything really in regards to that child and you remove your demands and your expectations and you come to just have a feeling of wanting to love them, not wanting something from them, you may be surprised at, at what happens. I'm observing in our, our family just the different decisions that the children are making but even so like one of our sons he's not so interested in feeling his emotions or or being emotional yet because of the shifts that I've been making he is um, when he's in my company more open and more um, eloquent about things and he though he wants to do still act on a lot of unethical things his conscience pricks him still and this is a very good thing and I remind him of that regularly and I'm saying well you've got this injury and why do you want to be unethical with people and you even know that you, you're doing it and you want to feel superior over them and take advantage. 
And I just speak to him about that and say, well, you know, you want to do these things and you're doing them and you're acting on them, but your conscience is showing you that that's not very loving and that's not, not the, a kind thing to do and it's unethical. So why do you keep wanting to do that? And we can have more open and transparent conversations. Uh, he also can see quite clearly some of the issues that are going on in our family. One, because he's been exposed to that via conversations in our family and also our friends speaking to the children directly, but also because he feels what's going on with us and he's allowed to do that. It's quite an interesting time at the moment, just observing the different choices of the children and what, what, they, what they're desiring to do and how they're desiring to do it. You know, God's their real parent and I'm just a teacher in their lives for a period of time until they leave the nest and choose to go off on their own accord and make their own decisions in the world. I feel an imperative to correct what I have taught them that's incorrect from God's perspective, as far as I understand and know it myself, and to begin to teach them and make transparent and explicit how God's work, laws are working on in their lives. And it was quite adorable the other day. Uh, his came home and, and she was like, Mum, the law of attraction is like showing me all of these things. And in the past, they've used like divine truth language, if you like, but they haven't really applied it to themselves. It's more been actually a manipulative technique towards me <laughs> often in order that you see, mum, you're doing the wrong thing and you're bad and you're unloving now. Whereas this time she came back and it was one of the first times and she's like, mum, this happened and this happened and this happened and this happened and this happened. And she's like, that's the law of attraction showing me all these things. We'd had a conversation some weeks ago where I'd said to her, um, some issues from her childhood are coming up. And she's starting to feel those and starting to remember things and, and stuff about some, some harm that was done to her. And I was saying, well, obviously God's laws are, are showing you that you're ready to feel these things. Like God's saying, you're ready right now. Like you're, this is if you can have, you know, if you can just let yourself feel whatever you feel about what's happening. So a couple of weeks later, she comes back and says, the law of attraction, mum, look, it's showing me that I'm ready to feel all this stuff. And it, it was from her heart, not a, just a feeling, oh, mummy, you've said this. It was like she was seeing it and sort of for the first time going, wow, no, I, I can see God's law in action about all these attractions that are happening for me. So she's still going through issues of what I'm, we're talking about in this video of how she feels about feelings. I've noticed um, with the help of Mary actually just recently uh, she was describing some of the feelings she has about emotion itself and she was sh talking to Izzy just about how, she, just, just validating Izzy's feelings of like Izzy sometimes feels like it's really hard to feel emotion and I'm weak if I feel emotion and I don't have any power if I, and I'm powerless and you know if I'm, if I'm anything but angry then people are going to take advantage of me. She has all these beliefs about emotion and a lot of those actually come from her dad. Because my experience was slightly different I hadn't realised that and so this um, video is partially based on these things that I'm seeing that we need to change the relationship with emotion before we can really feel the painful emotions that we have about whatever's happened to us in our childhood. Because if we don't change our relationship with emotion, then we can't, um, we can't actually feel the emotions that we had because we've got all these beliefs and these resistances and corrupt faith about emotion itself. So that's why this video is, is, is coming at it as it is. So once you have worked through your corrupt faith and your false beliefs about emotion, and you need to feel those emotionally and really feel them, then, then you've got the opportunity to start exploring what you really feel about everything. And that's an experiment you can do by honoring every feeling you have. So if, you're in, if you don't want to do something, don't do it, but figure out the reason why. If you want to sleep all day and you don't ever want to like engage, feel about why you want to do that. What, what do you get out of that? Or why do you want to avoid a whole lot of things that are happening in the world? Um, but honor that and figure out the reason. You can do it as well. You know, if you need to sleep for a week, sleep for a week. If you, or if you want to, you know, you wake up and then you're really tired, find out the reason why and what are the feelings you're suppressing and, or what addictions are you meeting in your family? Often, we get very, very tired and exhausted when we're giving out a whole lot of um, energy to meet others' addictions. We can also get very, very tired when you're suppressing a whole lot of emotion in yourself and that makes you feel very tired and foggy and unclear and 
not able to do things as well. So these are all things you may find or encounter as you go through a process to come to be your emotional self and change your relationship with emotion. But every time that you don't honour your emotion and how you feel and what you really think and what you desire, some people are better than that than others and depending on the injuries and your upbringing and you know what's happened to you in your life will depend how how you react and respond but often like depending on on where you come from I know for me it was a lot about sacrificing or giving up things and and I think um quite a lot of parents have this belief that you've got to sacrifice for your children but that's a very damaging thing to do for children and for your own soul and every time that you it's like a betrayal of yourself every time you sacrifice or you do the thing that you don't want to do and it's not loving for the children. You're not setting an example of what is loving and truthful because you're teaching children that are no parent sacrifices or if it's just the mum who sacrifices, that, just, that mum has to sacrifice for the children. That's not good to set up for male or female children because they're going to expect the same thing from their partner or they'll do the same thing or maybe rebel against it with their child um, if they ever have children in the future. And they'll act that out as well even if they don't have children in their daily lives under certain circumstances. Also I feel like sacrifice is a betrayal of self. It's you're doing something sometimes that you don't necessarily want to do and I'm not necessarily sure exactly how to but I feel that in a family you want to honour all the desires if they're in harmony with love and any desires that are out of harmony with love then you can between your partner and you if they're between your partner and you or you and your partner your partner and towards children you can sort those out and figure out why you've got those unloving desires and what you're wanting to do and why why you want to act on those um, and with children you can educate them about the difference or oh, this isn't this is an unloving desire and you know you can talk to them about that and say well you're free to act on that but these things might be likely to happen and know that they're not going to turn out well the child can either particularly if you start young some of their unloving desires are quite small and compared to when you get older and so if they can learn that as a young child then they're going to be hopefully develop more of a moral character and have have a more developed character where they have some integrity and some moral fiber and they stand up for what is good and right now if it's not developed as a child then they're going to have to learn that as they you know from kind of being knocked around by god's laws as they get older so these are just things to to look at and to be aware of and come to love emotion but regardless of what you have done in the past you can't change that now it's done what you can do is find out why you did it and what in you caused you to do that and that will be a combination of one maybe things that have happened to you and your beliefs about stuff that you inherited as a little child that you haven't now brought into harmony with love and truth and it will also be based on your unloving desires or your choices or your, what you want in, in, in life and so it's good to see the combination of those things. The key is to know that you can change and that God has created a whole system of laws that are trying to help you to correct and to change and to go through the process of forgiveness and repentance in order that you can heal and become a more loving soul and or human and this is very important to know the law of compensation is working on you all the time so every time that you're out of harmony with God's laws and you've done something unloving then there's already a penalty on your soul there's already some pain that's going to be there and if you're sensitive to it you'll be able to feel it and you can probably look back in your past and things you did with your children where now if you've heard some of the divine truth principles or you've heard some of the teachings you may look back and go wow I did some really unloving things there and be able to feel I know I can look back and I can feel that I consciously made decisions out of harmony with love. And there's reasons that I have for doing that, but now I can even and I can see those now I can see those reasons. And at the time I still chose to do them, you know, and why? I really need to look at that and heal that. And there's no point staying punishing ourselves or just feeling bad because we won't make any real change. We'll just stay in, this, in the place trying to avoid dealing with the issue. God's trying to help us to work through the issue so that we never do it again. And that's why emotion is so wonderful is because you get to feel the pain and how painful it is when things are out of harmony with love, both when they've been done to you, but 
the pain of what you've done to others that's out of harmony with love is some of the greatest pains in my experience. And I feel it's that way because when you genuinely feel them and you feel through and you actually understand the reasons why you did what you do, you will eventually come to a point where you would never want to do that thing again. In fact, I think you will just not be able to do that thing again because you just won't. I don't, one, I don't think you'll even think of doing it again if you're in harmony with love. But two, because you understand the repercussions of what you did and you understand the feelings and you understand it for both yourself and the other person, you never want to inflict that on them again. And you also know the feelings that you've had to go through and the experiences that you've had to go through and how the, you know, painful that is in order to heal that thing. Um, you know, whatever, when I say that thing, whatever the issue it is that you were unloving on. And that is an important part of the process and that's part of repentance. So God's not going to absolve you of all your sins just automatically and take them away because God wants us to understand the harm that we have done and the pain that we've created and that if we'd made loving choices that we could have avoided all of that. This is the, the beauty of God's way. If you are in harmony with God's laws and with love and you're aiming for God's truth and you aspire to that and you have a desire for it, then your future is going to be much smoother, you'll be happier, you'll be more freedom, you'll be more connected. There'll be all kinds of lovely rewards, but you still need to deal with your past. Thank you for the question and I hope that by applying some principles and self-reflection questions you'll be able to get past this judgment of yourself and if anyone else is in a similar situation with adult children or their children are growing and you're just realizing just all of the damage that you've done and how suppressing their emotion, uh, suppressing a child's emotion has really damaged them, then I hope this helps you to have some tools that you can work through. So remember the four primary qualities to develop, which is love, truth, faith, and humility. And if you focus on those, and then go through the process of looking at yourself first, realizing that the only emotion, um, change is soul-based emotional change. So that means that you need to change your relationship with emotion. Usually there's a whole lot of resistance and beliefs and false, you know, corrupt faith or false feelings about what emotion is itself. There's sometimes fears and a lot of anger and rage possibly to deal with. Work through those, work through that layer. And once you work through all of your, those things, then you'll come to your real feelings about emotion itself, work through that. And once you work through all of your resistance to emotion itself, and that might be a while doing it depending on your desire and, and your beliefs and feelings about it. Once you do that, the emotion itself that's been stored in you, that just needs to come out. And the process to do that is just like a little child. The emotion, when it was stored within you or frozen, at the time it happened, you'll just need to feel it as though you're that age again. So, you know, if something happened to you as a three-year-old and that, was, that, that emotion is, is suppressed and stuck inside of you, you'll need to release it like a three-year-old um, would because that's when it was stuck. If an emotion happened to you when you were seven, then as a seven-year-old, you'll need to feel like it and uh, feel that emotion as a seven-year-old would feel it. And so... If you can give up judgment of yourself and get through all of these resistance things and your false beliefs about emotion and your feelings about what you're going to look like or seeming silly or things like that, and just let yourself feel, it's going to benefit you so much personally. It will benefit your relationship. Again, though, if your partner's not on board, then you may also receive some of the things you very much fear from your partner who might not be supportive of doing that. That doesn't mean that you can't feel it or change it. You might just need to have some time on your own from time to time or make a space where you can feel things in a different area. Or There's, there's lots of different things you could do in, or if you're sincere about coming to, to love and feel and experience and express your emotion and become an emotional being. If there is resistance from external sources and projections at you, I'd feel about those as well. That's an attraction in your life for you to feel about those things. And you can, as an adult, make different choices and set yourself up in a different living arrangement if you need to for a period of time in order that you can work through whatever you need to work through. There are options and you have choices and it's important to remember that. 
at whatever you work you do on yourself and the more emotionally open you become, then the more allowing you'll be of emotion in children. Remember that if you're shut down to emotion on you, you're not going to be open to a child. So you might be, I'm fine with them doing it, but I don't want to do it. You're already putting out a feeling that you're not okay. So um, for someone else to feel that either. What you judge in yourself, you're going to judge in others. What you shut down in yourself, you're going to want to shut down in others. It's not an intellectual thing. That is a heartfelt, soul-based feeling that's going to come out of you. And if you, you can remember that you are the main influence in your family. You are the leader in your, the main character in your story. And you're also the authority in the family as a parent. And you govern that family. So you set the rules and the parameters and that's from your soul. I've talked about in previous videos about the soul-based conversation and that the soul-to-soul -soul interaction is the true interaction. And that's about getting honest and truthful about that. You're disconnected emotionally from what's happening in your soul. You're not going to be connected to what's really going on. Being connected emotionally is a way to find out truth about what's happened to you in the past. It's also a way to receive God's truth because God actually communicates with us via emotion. So that's a way we receive new truth from God. Receiving truth or love from God is a very emotional process. If we're not emotionally open and we haven't worked through our beliefs about love and about truth and about emotion itself, we're not going to be able to receive love from our fellow, you know, from our partner or from the children or from others in the world either. And we won't give love either in a, in a pure manner. There'll always be uh, something tainting it if we don't work through those issues. So feeling emotion, very, very important. And um, it was a good catalyst for a discussion just about emotion and working through and feeling it. Emotion is one of the key areas and to become to a place where you love and enjoy feeling emotion and to change that relationship that you currently have with emotion if it's out of harmony with love and truth. The only way to change is by experiencing, expressing and releasing emotion. And that is also it's the way you're going to express your nature and personality and be yourself as well is because we are emotional beings and when we feel excited we want to be able to be excited and when we feel sad we want to feel sad. And Having an environment that allows you to feel all of those things is a wonderful gift and an opportunity and you can give that gift in your own family. I, I really enjoy seeing children go from like one emotion to another emotion and just flow through it and I have some friends with small children now and I really enjoy being in, um, in the company of children. And because I think I've worked through some of my own feelings and beliefs about um, emotion itself, but also when a child isn't in your own family, sometimes it's, uh, there's, I think there's like less investments and less emotional ties there as well. It feels sort of more objective. And now I can just, I'm sort of quite fascinated and curious about the way that children interact and, and react. And when I see the children, uh, I'm just like watching and going, hmm, trying to feel the environment and feel their parents and feel them and feel what's really going on and what the child is trying to reflect to everyone collectively who's there. So, and particularly the parents. And I'm really enjoying, enjoying that process. At times you may not feel that objective and you may want to squash down the feelings and emotions in a, in a child and that is very damaging to the child. Children to feel their own emotions is, uh, they need to. And it's a wonderful gift if they can that you can give by creating an environment that allows that. You won't be able to create that environment if you don't work through your own beliefs and feelings about it and come to a place where you love and enjoy feeling emotion as well. What you feel and believe about emotion, your children are gonna absorb and inherit from you as well. Change your relationship with emotion, that enables the children in your care to change their relationship with emotion and there won't be the resistance. As children grow up, they can make positive change without a parent making change. So that's something to remember because I'm talking often about parents and under the premise that you are watching this as a parent of young children. But many of us have, you know, have grown up children. Still you making positive you know, you making soul based change and in, in harmony with love and truth in God's way is going to affect the adult children positively. But you might be a adult of who's had parents and you might not have children yourself and be going, oh, well, my parents aren't making change, so I can't. No, <laughs> my parents haven't made any change and, and I can still choose to. There's a lot of resistance from my family, but it doesn't mean it's impossible to change. So 
regardless if your parents, if, if you're a, a, a teenager or an adult and you have parents and they're not changing, you can still do the same process and the same procedure and work through it. Yes, there might be more opposition from your parents, there might be, they might become quite unkind and you may in, uh, eventually sever your relationship with your parents or your parents may have some humility and see what you're going through and that may also be enough for them to actually begin a self-reflection process themselves and then they may want to make some changes. Don't expect your parents to change, they may or they may not choose to but it doesn't mean that you can't change and what a wonderful gift is that. Imagine if you had to wait for your parent to change before you could, that would be terrible but and also that would be very unloving so God's made the provision that anyone who has the desire to can so regardless of your situation, you can make positive change in your life. So that wraps that up at the moment. Um, if you've got any more questions about emotion or about certain feelings that you're having in regard to emotion, feel free to contact me via the Love Truth office email account. There's details at the end of this video. Or you can contact me via my website, which is aloisalh.com. And there's a contact me page and you can send through your questions and queries that way as well. Go well with exploring how you feel about emotion itself and wherever you're at with emotion and I wish you all the best in becoming a 100% emotional being. See you next time.